Ooh. Oh my goodness. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Hot Mess, and it is very hot today. It is currently spring as I'm recording this, but oh, it's like 83 degrees in here. My apartment really likes to warm up when it gets warm outside. Uh, and I have not turned on my AC on yet, so it's very warm in here. But before things start to melt, I wanted to show you some plants that uh, I brought back from the dead. So, you know what? Let's just get right into it. Mostly aeroids and uh, one other special one. So in here, you're not gonna be able to see, it's gonna be a, a nice little uh, reveal. This here is Anthurium Dresslary. Now, I got this, I forget if it was a trade or as a gift, but anyway, I got it uh, from one of my friends who is a very experienced aeroid grower, and it was about two, maybe two, three times the size of this, and uh, I didn't know what I was doing at the time in terms of this particular species, because this species, for anyone that grows these, knows that they can be pretty finicky, you know, the, 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 anyway. So yeah, it kind of bit the dust, it turned into a stump, and I thought, well, it's a goner. So <laughs> I just, just very lazily threw that little stump into fluval stratum, put it in my grow tent, and within a matter of uh, a couple of months, it just decided to start growing. And now it's been growing new leaves left, right, and center, baby. And it's got a new one coming. By the way, the reason it's in that little terrarium thing is just to keep the humidity really high because when I put the stump into my grow tent, I put it into a 100% humidity enclosed space so that that extra humidity uh, could help the stump come back to life essentially because I thought it was a goner. I thought, oh, it's probably gonna rot, you know, whatever. So yeah, well, there it is right there. That's probably the prettiest leaf at the moment. That's the newest leaf. You're just barely starting to see some characteristic when they get mature, hoo hoo! They look quite fabulous. That right there was the first little leaf and I was like, oh my God, it's coming back. It's coming back. And it's rooting in the fluval stratum. Let's see, it grows a lot of algae, but you can see there's a root right there. So yeah, I mean, the fluval stratum, man, it has just been a game changer. It's not like a sure thing. I've had things that have rotted in fluval, but uh, yeah, it just seems to work really well. The airways seem to really like it. The roots seem to grow in it very well. And I have, had a, I have a few things that I've uh, brought back from the dead, but this is probably the first one. And they usually are darker. That is probably because I'm blasting it with light. They tend to not really like too much light. They like the shade, so they, they, that might be from too much light. It's a finicky boy. We'll just see how it goes. But there it is right there. And I'm gonna put him back into his little home. All right. And I just got him on my, uh, <laughs> and I just got him on my windowsill. <laughs> the next guy is also very humble, probably even more humble, um, that I also got from the same person. Uh, this is Carla Blackie, I crossed with Luxurians. And this was a plant that was, you know, again, it was a plant when I got it from her and it got some root rot, it lost all its leaves, and I was like, oh boy. So I thought it was a goner as well. Threw it into the fluval and look at that. Look at that new leaf right there. And look how shiny it is. And it's got two other growth points right there and right there. So that is really, really exciting. These things, when they, when they come back to life, they tend to put out leaves first and then roots. <laughs> Same thing happened with the dress Larry. But that right there, is probably my most humble boy. And uh, the next one, you know, we're gonna get to do some bigger things. So this one doesn't look the prettiest, but right here is a Philodendron Varicosum Amazon Sunset from Equigenera. This is the first plant I've gotten from them that I've been able to <laughs> successfully bring back because when you import these guys, their roots, they're just like fine hairs and they just <laughs> In shipping so yeah it's really difficult so, to get these guys to to be shipped anywhere you know what I'm saying and it's a varicosum anyone that grows varicosum you, you know how it is with the varus so but that is the oldest leaf there I'm gonna cut that off pretty soon because it is putting out a brand new leaf and the reason they call it Amazon sunset it go oh, don't mind my very dirty hand I was doing some repotting but that is how red the back of the leaf is. I mean, for anyone that is familiar with El Choco Red, or formerly El Choco Red, now known as Rubri Juvenile, uh, this 
is like a crimson red. It's so amazing. It's, it's even more red than, than the El Choco. It's a really cool plant. Not the easiest to care for, but I'll probably throw this in the terrarium once that new leaf comes in and uh, just hope that it climbs up uh, and lives its best life. So, yeah. This guy, again, I think, was it two years ago? A stump, a mid-cutting of a philodendron after I sold the top cutting and the mother plant. I just had the mid-cutting and it just sat in water for months and months and months until finally, finally it decided to come back to life and wake up. And I have had it <laughs> this entire time and uh, it's died like probably two or three more times after that and then it came back again. <laughs> So here it is guys, my philodendron 69686. The reason why it has that very cumbersome numerical name is because that is the botanical number that it was given when it was discovered. So basically the story goes that it was discovered by Robert Burley Marks. Am I saying his name right? I'll put it on the screen. But um, he had this plant in his collection but he didn't remember where he got it. And because they don't know where he got it, and they haven't found it in the wild, allegedly, uh, they can't really give it a proper name as of recording this video. Maybe by the time you watch this video, it's been given a name. But for right now, it's 69686. Some people call it Big Ears, which, you know, pretty fitting. And I also have a growing influval stratum. These were all water roots, guys, all water roots. And now look at that, it's just growing the fluval, and I just water it when it gets dry, so I'll water it later today, and let a little bit of water pool at the bottom, and then that will be wicked up through capillary action and hydrate all of those roots. And look at how big these leaves are getting. I mean, these are what the leaves looked like before, when it was just kind of growing out in water, after, you know, coming back to life for the third time, after I killed it for the third time. <laughs> and then it put out, let's see, it put out, whoo! Look at this right here. Let me try not to drop this glass because, oh my goodness, oh, it's slipping. And finally, guys, we have one of my most sentimental plants in my collection because it used to belong to my Grammy, uh, who passed away a couple of years ago, my mother's mother. And it was a gift to her by my late uncle, my mother's brother. So it's a very, very special plant. It was just kind of left to die in her house. Um, you know, several weeks after she had passed, it was just kind of sitting there, the leaves were all wrinkly, the roots were rotting away, and I was like, oh my god, can I save this thing? And I did, and it took about a full year to get it to not only rehab, but to finally put out flowers, and I had no idea what the flowers were going to look like, but here they are! It's just the most rewarding thing. I am not a very patient person, but anyone that grows orchids, you gotta have some patience because, yeah, they usually bloom one or two times a year and that's it. So, yeah, and he's just growing in a Vanda pot right there, little wooden basket, growing out all those beautiful roots. I just have some decorative um, driftwood in here or some curling willow to prop up the flower spike because they can get a little bit top heavy and droop over. And the reason why it has not too many flowers right now is because it used to have all, you know, flowers all along here. Those went to seed and dropped off, but then it put out a few more buds. So this has been blooming since the new year, which as of recording this, four months and it's still going strong. And this is how they grow in nature. They cling onto the side of a tree. Usually people grow them in a pot, you know, like upright like this, but you see how the flowers are upside down now <laughs> because in nature, when they're clinging to the side of a tree, this is actually how they grow. But yeah, guys, this is just a very quick little video. I wanted to show you all these guys while they were still looking good. Also, these flowers, they're probably gonna go soon-ish. They've been open for, I think, a few weeks now. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure you guys got to see these beautiful flowers. And that is my very special orchid, my Grammy's orchid. I love you, Grammy. And yeah, guys, again, very short video. Just wanted to do a very quick little highlight. So yeah, enjoy the rest of your day, night, or whenever you're watching this. And I'll see you in the next one. So have a good day. This has been Jake and Zara, also known as Planky for Life, also known as The Hot Mess. Get out of here. Bye-bye. Wait, hold on.